This is one of the coolest little things I keep stocked in the shop. It's about the size of a fingernail and about as thin as a piece of paper. It doesn't cut metal or shoot a bunch of sparks everywhere and it definitely doesn't make any noise. What it does is it measures forces in the real world and converts them into digital world into values that I can look at. And it does this by measuring mechanical strain. This is a strain gauge. And in this video, I'm gonna show you just how cool strain gauges are by sticking this one to the CRX. My name's Eric and this is Dirty Elbow's Garage. Okay, so if you don't know what strain gauges are or what strain is, no worries, I've got you covered. I'm gonna go over four main concepts to understanding what strain gauges are. The first concept is that metal is flexible. And that is to say, it's going to deform anytime you apply a force to it. It's not perfectly rigid. If a fly lands on a piece of steel, that piece of steel is gonna deform whether or not you can see it. Then the second concept is strain itself. Strain is the change in length divided by the original length. You can apply strain to a variety of materials, not just metals. In this example, that's what I'm going to be talking about. So as an example, I've got a rubber band here. The rubber band itself is my steel structure, and I put a little black mark on there, which is acting as my strain gauge. As I start to load the rubber band, the black mark moves and stretches. So its new length minus its old length is the change in length. Okay, there's its original length, there's its new length. If you take that change in length and you divide it by the original length, that's what strain actually is. And this little black mark here is doing exactly what the strain gauge does. Concept number three is that the strain gauge is just a variable resistor inside of a circuit. That's a resistor. The strain gauge acts as a variable one of these. As that metal stretches, and just like we saw in that rubber and the black line gets longer, the resistance of a strain gauge changes and the voltage going through that circuit produces a variance in voltage that's proportional to the change or the stretching that the strain gauge is seeing. That information is sent to a computer and then logged in a data logger. Okay, so the fourth concept is something called linear deformation. And the steel that we are putting the strain gauge on in this scenario is only living within its elastic range. That means it's going to flex, but the flexing or deflection that it occurs is going to come right back to zero when that load is removed. So if, what does that mean? It means if I have one pound causing one inch of deformation, then five pounds is going to cause five inches of deformation. That's what it means. There's a linear relationship between the load applied and the deformation that occurs. And the strain gauge is picking up the strain as that deformation is occurring. Okay, so here's the cool part. Now that you know what those four concepts do and how they play into the system, any part of a vehicle can be turned into a measurement device using a strain gauge. Right now, I'm gonna throw the CRX up on the lift and I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, with the CRX up on the lift, let's jump right into where I'm gonna put the strain gauge. This is part of the lower control arm and based on the geometry of its layout, it's designed to handle the majority of the longitudinal loads, basically accelerating and braking. I say the majority of the loads because once you figure in the linkage angles, steering angles, bushing deflections, everything like that, the loads are distributed quite a bit. All of that being said, this link is where I'm going to be applying the strain gauge. This link is a great example of being in something that I call the load path. When you try and accelerate, torque is generated by your engine and sent through the tires into the ground. That torque fights against the inertia or the weight of the car that wants to sit still. So what you have is the torque from the engine pulling the car forward and you have the weight of the car holding it back. Well, this rod right here sits in between those two and it's gonna compress or basically squish whenever you're accelerating. And the exact opposite happens during braking. And the strain gauge is going to pick up both of those. So let's get into applying the strain gauge.
Okay, so the CRX is off the lift, wire routing's done, strain gauge is in place. I just wanted to test it in a static or sitting still scenario. So really quick, I jacked up the car. I have a ratchet strap wrapped around the wheel coming off the bottom side of it. And I tied it to Murray. Murray just happened to be sitting here and it was heavy enough for me to pick up some uh, data points from. So from this quick test, I was able to verify the linearity of the strain gauge or the proportional de deformation that I mentioned earlier. And I'm going to be able to scale those, that strain value and turn it back into a force at the base of the tire. So now that the static test is all wrapped up, let's take it for a quick drive. All right, let's go over some data from what we just watched. First up is a snip of the data covering a smoothish acceleration. Here you can see I take off as the suspension starts loading up. This downward slope back to zero is me reducing the throttle load, getting ready to shift. Here the car is rolling, suspension unloaded with no acceleration or braking, and I'm shifting gears over about a second and a half. Now I'm back on the throttle, leaning into it a little bit more, and finally, I make a quick transition from accelerating to some significant braking. Now that data set was easy enough to see, no real issues, but a quick acceleration is a little bit different of a story. Here's a snip of a higher rev launch. At first look, it's pretty rough, but let's break it down. Unlike the smoother acceleration, I dumped the clutch here and lost all traction. The car fights for grip for almost two whole seconds. Once it finally catches, it starts building load as we work our way through the engine's torque curve. This little wavy section is high in the RPMs right before a shift. So I'm past my peak torque, meaning that my rate of acceleration starts to fall, causing the car to see some undulations for about a second. Next up is my shift, which lasts about half a second, and the engine load almost drops back down to zero. Now this part looks strange, but if you listen to the sound right after the shift on this clip one more time, you can hear the RPMs hop or dip. This causes its own undulations that taper off and almost settle out. Unfortunately, right before they smooth out, I needed to get on the brakes, taking me back to the other side of zero again. Okay, so why is this important? Well, if you were to modify your engine, you would take it to your local dyno and get the engine tuned and refined. But when you get a new set of suspension components or new tires or new control arms or anything like that, chances are you don't take your chassis to get it tuned in the same way that you treat your engine. And what this means is that potentially performance is left on the table. One of the foundations of racing performance is to put as much force into your tires as you can. This allows you to push the car harder and ultimately faster. Now you could use accelerometer data or track times to kind of verify how you're set up and how you're tuning your chassis. The issue with these is that they're higher level analysis and those two things are somewhat driver dependent. On the other hand, a chassis with a strain gauge setup is going to provide the best resolution you can get when it comes to analyzing vehicle performance, guaranteeing that you get the most out of what your vehicle can do. And so for the CRX, I'm not just gonna stop with one strain gauge, I'm going to do the entire suspension set to make sure that I capture longitudinal forces as well as lateral forces. And that brings me to what's next for the CRX. Well, besides a decent wash and finishing the DAC system, I'm going to give it the refresh it needs. It's getting ready for a tunable ECU, new bushings, tires, possibly wheels, plenty of chassis tuning, and definitely some paint. I've taken quite the break from the local autocross club, as well as some track days, so I'm looking forward to taking it back out there. And with that, that wraps up the video. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And as always, thanks for watching. I really need to wash this thing.